Oh, we're gonna put my microphone on. What's happening, guys? What we've got here today is the Drock signal generator. It needs 12 to 24 volts in. It outputs zero to 10 volts or zero or zero to four to 20 milliamps out. It's kind of it's kind of strange how they're explaining that, but we'll talk about it more. Um, these kinds of devices are used in uh, testing different things such as uh, programmable logic circuits, uh, valves and sensors and stuff like that. They're also known as an analog simulator. So if you have a, um, some sort of valve that you want to test whether it's actuating right and at what voltage or what amperage, you can use a little device like this. Um, Fluke makes them and they're, you know, three or four hundred dollars. But uh, this is 20, 20 bucks or so from Amazon. So I thought we'd give it a little play. So what we can do here is we can hook her up to a power supply. There we go. So it's um, it's on the voltage setting. You can see right here on the 10 volt side. And it's set for uh, two volts there. This is a multi-turn pot. So all the way down, it's set for zero. And all the way up, 10.05. So let's uh, check the accuracy on that. Bring in a meter here. I'll just grab the fluke. I got it sitting right by me. We'll set her for DC voltage. We'll just hook up our ground lead here. Or here. Doesn't want to stay on. Let's try again. Come on. Alright. So outputting uh, 10 volts there. If I go to the voltage output, which is this one here, we should see about 10 volts. Hello? Did I lose? Oh, lost my ground. Come on. There we go. Let's try again. I said 10 volts. Okay, 9.7 on the fluke. Uh, so that is a little bit off there. Let's take her down some. Down to maybe 5 volts. Well, that's closer. 5.02, 5.02. So somewhat interesting. Now, we'll get another meter because the fluke doesn't do current and we'll check out um, the milliamp output. Okay, I got the uh, Anang out. It has no trouble with current. So we'll hook up our ground again. Now the milliamp output is the second one in here, but I've got this on voltage because I just want to show you something. If we probe the milliamp output Regardless of what our voltage is set for here, we're going to get almost the full output. All right, so let's switch this over to our milliamp range, and then we'll switch our display over to milliamps. So we'll turn this down. Let's get about 10 milliamps on here. All right. Then we can hook up here to our milliamp reading. And get the thing to clip. There we go. So there you go. We're showing 10.04 here. 9.9 .9 here. We can take it down. Or we can take it up. The thing to remember is that you're always getting, when you're when you're on the milliamp output, you're always getting the full voltage at the specified milliamps. So just keep that in mind if you ever play with one of these. What we need to do now, of course, well, I'll tell you what, one more thing before we take it apart. Let's take a look at the output on the scope. Let's go to voltage, and we'll set it for a... Uh, 
close to five volts as I can get. How's that? Then we'll hook up our ground and we'll probe voltage output. And I'll bring up the scope here to show you. Okay, so there it is off on. We're at five volts per division. That's one division. Yeah. And then if we probe over to the milliamp output, you see we've jumped two divisions. So we're getting a straight DC signal at uh, 10 volts. All right, let's take it apart. Now, as you can see, we've got a PCB on top that's bolted into just a plain old plastic, like junction box housing. Well, those screws aren't very tight in there. Not tight at all. I wonder if there's a threaded insert in there or not. Okay, now that one's a little tight. Doesn't feel like it's coming out straight though. All right, that's better. That one's not tight at all either. Ah, oh, the motorcyclists getting in their their last rides before the weather changes. It's already started to change. It was only about 54 degrees here, which after the summer we've had. I am perfectly fine with that. So these are some pretty long screws. Holy cow. And the last one. Ta-da! Yeah, just an empty box. Okay. So now this is kind of interesting. We've got an IC here, S F C or STC, can't quite tell, zoom in, maybe you guys can see it. We've got another IC here, diode, this looks like maybe a voltage regulator, transistor, another little transistor. Couple trimmers. But what I find interesting is we've got a battery plus and a battery minus. And there is plenty of room in this box. I mean, if you look at what's going down going down in there, you could easily solder a couple batteries into that. And that would work out okay but you know what for 20 bucks that's not a half bad little device if you put a couple batteries in there you've got yourself a little uh, low current portable power supply not too bad at all I like it I want to thank uh, Dave for sending this in for us thank you very much Dave nice little thing to play with this again is the uh, Drock signal generator. Before I go, I'll give you a sneak preview of what's coming up in another video. It's this. Ooh. You probably already know what it is. But if you don't, you just have to wait for that video because I'm not telling you today. Thanks for watching. Thanks to all the patrons. Don't forget to uh, like, subscribe, share. That's it. I'm out. Peace.